Good morning. Welcome to worship. Today is the day of Pentecost. Happy birthday, church. Thank you for joining us this morning. We're glad you're here, and we hope that you will share your worship experience with your family and your friends, whether it's online or right here in the sanctuary. Pentecost is a very special feast day in Christ's global church as we remember the descending of God's Spirit upon all people gathered. So we invite you to enjoy cake, punch, and coffee with us in Fellowship Hall after the worship service today. Our weekly prayer meeting and Bible study will be on break for the rest of the summer. We will announce when it will return in the fall. Our youth trip to Urban Faith Mission today is canceled because of the weather. Scott Kilbasa had said it's just too messy down there for the activities that they'd had planned. Please join us as we roll into summer with the return of Wednesday night with Summer Suppers. The first one is this coming Wednesday, May 26th at 5 p.m. We'd love to see everyone for some great fun and food. We will also celebrate a successful school year by honoring our preschool and KDO teachers and all UCUMC families. Come join us and help us invite everyone to join us also. Look for our hospitality sign-up sheet out in the narthex to facilitate a successful summer supper event. We've decided to add a sign-up sheet where you can volunteer to help us. We'll need help serving food, assisting with games and activities, and providing an unforgettable fun experience for all. Please note that all who have been volunteer or have volunteered for this to please Plan on being on campus to start helping us at 4.30 p.m. this coming Wednesday, and thanks for your help. A memorial service for Leon Smoot is planned for next Saturday, September, or I'm sorry, May 29th at 10.30 a.m. right here in the sanctuary with a reception to follow in Fellowship Hall. All are welcome to join us to honor and remember a great friend and beloved UCUMC member. And next Sunday, May 30th, we'll celebrate Memorial Day weekend. This Sunday, you won't want to miss it as we honor men and women who have given their lives in service to our country. Lay Minister Bob Buck will be offering the message, and Pastor Cynthia will offer a memorial prayer. If there is a person you know who's died in the service to our country and you wish to honor them in this service, please contact the church office so that we might remember them by name. And we'd advertise that we would only have one service next Sunday. That has changed. There will now be two services. There will be the 815 service and then a 10 o'clock service, and the informational and discussion meeting will be following the 10 a.m. worship service. And finally, and this is important, if you have a prayer concern, if you desire a deeper connection with this faith community, or if you wish a call from Pastor Cynthia or a member of our care team, please contact the church office. And if you know of someone who's looking for a faith connection, please help us connect with them. Better yet, invite them to church. We live to serve, to love, and to grow. Now let's enter into a time of silence as we prepare for worship.
Please join me in the call to worship. God declares, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. The young shall see visions. The elders shall dream dreams. Both men and women shall prophesy. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. They may be wondering, what is Pentecost? Well, you know, there are actually not just two big church days on the annual calendar. We like to think there's Christmas and there's Easter. But as the sanctuary shows us today, there's a third, and it is Pentecost. It is the birthday of the church. And if you look around, you can see a bunch of things in the sanctuary that are not what we normally see. You see a lot of red and a lot of orange and a lot of yellow. And we also see that the pyramids for this one day of the year are red. I wonder why. Well, to find that out, we could go to the scripture from the book of Acts in chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like a rush of a violent wind. It filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared amongst them, and the tongues rested on each of them, and all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit. I wonder what else you see. Perhaps you can see how many balloons we have. Maybe we need to talk about for that for a minute. Because Pentecost is the celebration of the gift of the Holy Spirit, where those few believers who were in that room in Jerusalem, all of the sudden, were given the gift of the Holy Spirit, and it helped them to develop the church of God, the church of Christ. And while they were there, when they were filled with this spirit, just like Jesus had promised them, it makes me think of balloons. When you look at a balloon like this, there's nothing happening to it. But when you fill it with air, it changes shape. It changes size. It can make noise. Let me see if I can do it. Sometimes I'm better at it than others. But you know that sound. I know you know that sound. But it has energy. It has a voice. It changes. And that is what happened to the disciples on that day. And it's what God calls us to do as well to fill ourselves with the voice and the energy to change and to go out into the world and tell. And one of the ways we do that is when we talk to others. You know, the Hebrew word for air and breath are the same. And <laughs> somebody knows that. I don't know who that was, but somebody knows that. And so when the disciples were filled with that Holy Spirit, the message for us is that we are filled with that Holy Spirit too. So just like these balloons, I want you to go out full of the Holy Spirit and share the word. Will you pray with me? 
God of wind and fire, on this day of Pentecost, we celebrate the beginning of your church, and we thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit. To both those early believers and to believers today, we are so grateful to watch and see what your spirit can do in the world. In your son's name we pray. Amen. In the bowl there is a flower, in the seed an apple tree, in cocoons a hidden promise, butterflies will soon be free. In the cold and snow of winter, there's a spring that waits to be unrevealed until its season, something God alone can see. There's a song in every silence, seeking word and melody. There's a dawn in every darkness, bringing hope to you and me. From the past will come the future, what it holds a mystery, unrevealed until its season, something God alone can see. In our end is our beginning, in our time infinity, in our doubt there is believing, in our life eternity, in our death a resurrection, at the last the victory unrevealed until its season something god alone can see that was beautiful thank you this is a little awkward the altar flowers this morning were provided by me in celebration of Shivi's and mine 44th anniversary, which was on Friday. <laughs> Friday was also Rick and Kathy Gold's anniversary, and tomorrow is Jack and Monica Henson's anniversary. <laughs> also this morning, we celebrate that Jack Henson, <clears throat> excuse me, had a successful ablation on his heart last Tuesday, and he's now home and doing well. We have, these con <laughs> we have these concerns this morning we'd like to share with you. Margie Wallace's friend, Linda Sampson, had a biopsy on a mass in her breast this past week. We ask that you keep her in your prayers. Donna Limerick requests prayers for three-day-old preemie McKenzie, who must undergo many medical procedures to save her life. Isis Thiel's brother had a hemorrhagic stroke and also bacteremia, and he is doing poorly. Isis will be leaving tomorrow to join him. Yvonne Foster's co-worker Gemma is having marital problems and is now living out of her car. She needs a place to live and storage space for several large boxes. Rebecca Myers has requested prayers for a diagnosis of a medical problem and some upcoming medical tests that she has. And Mae Hatton is now under hospice care and is nearing the end of her life. Would you join me in prayer, please? <clears throat> Almighty and loving God, as we celebrate the birth of your church today, we look back over the past 2,000 years and we marvel at what you have done through your church, how you have used broken individuals to accomplish your will how you've used us for good to overcome evil in this world. We marvel at medical breakthroughs that have happened over the past 2,000 years, technology, 
all of the blessings in our lives, how easy our lives have become for most of us in this world. However, there is still much evil, much poverty, much injustice in this world, and we know that you want to use us. You want us to step out of our comfort zones, to notice the need around us, to notice the poverty and the injustice, the sickness and the illness. You want us to use the goods that you have given us, all those good things, to use our power as witnesses and servants to serve those around us. We pray especially for our President and our Congress and the leaders of the nations of the world, that they would be guided by your will. We pray for our men and women in uniform and those in civilian service, our first responders and those medical personnel, all those who serve us and protect our freedoms. We ask that you protect them and strengthen them, comfort their families and provide for them. Encourage us again as witnesses to share that love that Jesus showers on us. We pray all of these things as he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. When I feel afraid, think I've lost my way, still you're there right beside me. And nothing will I fear as long as you are near. Please be love for me and yet my heart forever is wandering and Jesus be my guide and hold me to your side and I will love you to the end thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Good morning. The scripture, uh, the scripture is Acts 2, 1 through 21. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speak in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they ask, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and the residents of Mesopotamia and Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belong to Cyrene and visitors from Rome, both Jews and 
proselytes. Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not, these are not drunk as you suppose for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Pentecost, oh, there I am. It's a party. Today is a feast day. It is a party day. It is a day that we celebrate that the world and what it means to be in it forever changed in the gifting of God's Spirit upon God's people. Now, the Spirit of God was present in the beginning, right? The Spirit moved over the face of the water. The Spirit of God in our story, our collective story of God's people, uh, has been present throughout, and yet on this day, on Pentecost now, the Spirit descends in a way that the Spirit of God now is received into God's people, living in and with and through God's people for the sake of God's mission always. Let's pray. Gracious God, we do give you thanks that you are not simply mindful of us, but that you live among us, that you live in and through us, and that we are your instruments of peace. We ask that you now will open your word, that we might hear what you are speaking this day. And we ask it in Christ's name. Amen. I was having a conversation with a gentleman yesterday. This is a gentleman whose story reminds me and I think uh, many of us would say we have been very blessed uh, that we had opportunities and options when we came into the world and the places through the people that we came into the world where we didn't start out in the world surrounded by stumbling blocks as this man did. His life has been difficult. Now, I will tell you, this man is as spirit-filled as any I know to be with him for any time is to be blessed, though his life is not free of difficulty or challenge. Each day is a good day because each day is a gift of God. We were visiting a little bit yesterday while we were resting, and he started talking to me about how it is that he came back to church. And uh, he said, you know, I was at a place in my life where I really didn't feel I would be living much longer. I didn't see any hope. I didn't see any future. It just been too hard for too long. And he said, but I'll go out into my yard. And he said, there was this lighted steeple that stood out against the sky. And I gazed upon this lighted steeple. And he said, I just found peace. There was just some peace. And there was hope in my heart. And so it came to be my place to go. In the evening, I would leave my house. I would look in the sky. And I would see this lighted steeple. 
And one day, he said, about two o'clock in the morning, I decided I would go find out what this steeple was attached to. So I was walking the blocks in the night, and I came to a church. And I stood outside that church, and I made a decision that night, I will make this church my home. And so the following Sunday, he attended worship, and he started to go back. And after a series of Sundays, the pastor said, well, let's sit down. And let me learn a little bit more about you. So he said, I was talking to the pastor and I shared with him, it was that lighted steeple, it called me home. I would go out at my house in the night, I would look in the sky, I would see this lighted steeple, and I felt that God was inviting me to come back home. The pastor was silent for a moment, and then when he spoke, what he said was, well, that steeple hasn't been lighted for years. There's another man, a familiar name to you all, Fred Craddock, right? Famous teacher, preacher, 20th century, I know, uh, a favorite of some of yours. And Fred Craddock, teacher, preacher, uh, wrote in one of his publications to students, which I was when I read this, he was saying, you know, sometimes pastors think that they can forego the study. Sometimes pastors get a little stuffed on themselves and think they don't need to prepare for Sunday worship, as you will always need to prepare for Sunday worship. Some pastors will tell you they just lean on the Holy Spirit. He says, I'm going to tell you, in all of my years of preaching, I had an appointment with the Holy Spirit at 10 o'clock on Tuesday morning, and the Holy Spirit never failed to show up. So who is this Holy Spirit? What is this Holy Spirit of which we hear this morning in the book of Acts? There is much that we can glean, church, in this passage. For one thing, what we learn is the Holy Spirit speaks to us as individuals, yes, but for the sake of the body. The man who saw the lighted steeple in the night sky was called back into community. And the man who had an appointment with the Holy Spirit at 10 o'clock on Tuesday morning met with the Holy Spirit for the sake of the community. We are called to be a community, the Holy Spirit who has been present throughout the whole of our sacred text descends upon the people when they are gathered in a community. I knew a lady in a former uh, congregation, and she was gifted, as are we all, by water and spirit in your baptism church. You are ordained, each of you All of you, all of us together are ordained into this body of Christ. All are essential. All bring gifts. Sometimes we are annoyed by the gifts of a particular few. But no, we are all essential. Each and every one of us. We are less when we are not all together. I'm off topic now, that's always a dangerous thing, but I'm doing some other document writing right now, and one of the words I had a chance to look up this week was integral. What does it mean to be integral to something? What it means to be integral to something means that you are essential, you are necessary, that for the whole to be whole, you must be present. And that is the body of Christ, church. Each of you is integral to the body of Christ. Each of you is essential for the body to be whole. When we pull away, we extract ourselves. We withhold ourselves. In Methodist tradition, it is our prayers and our presence and our gifts and our service and our witness. When we withhold any, when we withhold all, we diminish ourselves and the body also. Right? Don't ever say, it doesn't matter if I show up, each integral to the body. I knew a woman in another community, and she had been gifted in a, in a, in a beautiful way. Uh, she was somebody whose prayers just seemed to have, I don't know, extra something in them. She was an interpreter also. People would come to her. They were drawn to her as people who are spirit gifted uh, very often are. People would come and say, what does this mean? I've had this vision. I've had this dream. We heard about this in the passage also this morning. And together they would pray. 
and she would explain to others what she believed to be true. But you see, in time, arrogance crept into this woman and her understanding of her gifts. And she began to truly believe that she was other than those who were lesser mortals. She began to believe her prayers and her gift of prayer set her above and apart for others. She began to speak out loud about the hypocrites in church. She began to separate herself from the body. She untethered herself from the body. And though the body continued to love her and her well, though the body continued to pray for her, those, there were those who would go and speak to her. She really more and more was simply spinning off into sickness and decline. And in the end, she wanted nothing to do, even with the pastor. Uh, her life was coming unraveled. So it is a reminder, church, always, always, When the Spirit speaks, the Spirit speaks to us in community. It gives us opportunity to talk out loud with one another about things that are on our heart and mind such that we can hold one another to account and for clarity so that we might be strong together moving forward. On this day, Pentecost, as we celebrate the Holy Spirit coming into the body of those who are gathered, we are reminded that uh, we are a community, we are a family. Another thing that comes to mind in the listening of this passage is that there is diversity. You see, the Jewish community had come together for the festival of feasts. Some say the festival of words. But the Jewish people were gathered. They came from various countries that you were able to get us through that long, uh, there you go, the, the, the litany of the places from the places that the Jewish community had come that day. Not an easy task, right? They had come from far and wide. They spoke different language. They were indoctrinated culturally in different ways. They did not think the same any more than all Christians think the same. Do we think the same? Of course. (laughs) There's the optimist in the crowd. We need you. (laughs) The people of God, we are, Wesley said, think and let think as long as it does not strike at the root of salvation, right? There is room for diversity of thought. The diversity of thought is a good thing. It will sharpen us. It will strengthen us. It will hold us to account. Diversity is a good thing. It is a strengthening thing. The Spirit of God speaks to us in community, creates in us community, embraces diversity, and ours then is not to become a cluster of affinity groups who think alike, because we kind of implode when we do that, but to always be mindful and looking and opening our embrace to receive those who are different than, well, I am, you are, diversity. When diverse communities come together, we become more reflective of creation. We become more reflective of God's nature. Diversity, the Spirit of God on Pentecost came when a diverse community was gathered. And the other birthday gift we receive on this day in a cost is a reminder that we are not alone. My husband, many of you have been listening to his journey, our journey this last year. He is now at a place where John is not even able to turn in bed without the assistance of at least one other person. John is not able to turn over in bed. And uh, every once in a while, he will wake up and he will wonder if maybe he is alone. 
And this morning, as I was getting ready for church, I had already been in the room. I had placed my hand on his head. We had talked a little bit, exchanged a few words, but I said, I'm going to go now. I've got to get ready for church, but I'm close by, John. Well, he didn't remember. And I heard, as I've heard on different occasions, his voice. It starts out rather timid at first. Hello. Ho. Ho. And the more he has to repeat that, you can feel and hear the panic coming in. Am I alone? Am I alone? And of course, he smiles and radiates joy when he finds out, no, I am here. You're never alone. You are never alone. Church, we are never alone. We are never alone. We trust so much in our thinking. We trust so much in our capacities. We trust so much in our education and our skills. We have been enculturated to pull ourselves up by the mythical bootstraps such that we think it's all about us or those immediately around us or our team. It is always about the Spirit of God. We do not manufacture the Spirit of God. We receive the Spirit of God. Spirit of God is a gift. It is a gift freely given for the sake of community. For the sake of becoming the diverse body of Christ in the world. For the sake of God's mission, which is to be restored and reunited into holy communion with God, with one another, through Christ. On this Pentecost Sunday, as we celebrate the birthday of Christ's church. This beautiful assembly, this body held together by God's grace. It is good that we remember that the Spirit is among us, living with us, in us, through us, showing the way, creating lights in the sky. That the Spirit of God holds us together as a communion that we will always be growing and going forth, that we are not alone and the Spirit is trustworthy and the Spirit will show us the way. So on this, our coming out day, church, as we are starting to shed our masks, as we are allowed to shop in stores, maybe without masks, as we are learning again to be community in a way where we are physically close, cake and coffee and fellowship hall and barbecues on Wednesday nights, right? Let us go forward remembering that God is not done with us yet. We are moving forward with one another following the Spirit who is already showing us the way. Amen. Please stand as able as we affirm our faith together with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. 
As has been our tradition, our offering plates will not be passed down the aisles for safety. However, there are baskets at the back of the sanctuary for those of you who are in worship with us today. If you're worshiping with us online, we remind you there are a number of different ways that you can give to Christ Church here at UCUMC. You can text giving by texting UCUMCTX to 73256. You can give online through the Realm app. You can give by clicking on the Give Online button on our church website. You can send your check in through the mail, or you can uh, give through your bank by using bill pay. Let us pray together. Gracious and living God, you are the Lord of all. Only you can send your spirit to bring us new life. You graciously speak your word of hope in times of struggle and uncertainty and in times of joy and of peace. We're grateful that you are continually at work in our lives and in the world to fulfill your promises. May our giving today show our trust in you. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our closing hymn, Victory in Jesus, number 370. <laughs> Pentecost, go now, go in the sure and certain knowledge that you are covered by the grace of God, held in the love of God, the grace of Jesus Christ, the power and the victory of the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Go in peace. Amen. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you.
Good morning. you were here. There's some cake in the fellowship hall. If you want to take something with you, maybe. Thank you. <laughs> 